So we just got back from Paxos this weekend and ooh, man, was it a good time. And among many amazing experiences, shout out to Liz, you're the best. We got to try Sonic Frontiers. So we lined up for like two hours and we got to play the game for like 20 minutes. Was it worth it? Mm, I don't know. I was pretty skeptical, especially after the previous playtesting that happened in like June or something. That got some pretty mixed reviews to say the least. It seems like some people are super excited for Sonic's Breath of the Wild moment, but other people think it's going to be a steaming pile of trash. Look, I understand that point of view. We've all been burnt by 3D Sonic before. Sonic Forces? Ah, I mean, it, 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 it was crap, let's be honest. <laughs> I was going to say it was okay. But, it, but it's not that great. But there has been a while since that, like June, did you say? The June playtest? And Sega's had some time to polish things up. There's a couple of issues, but let's find out if it was actually good. You're gonna have to stick around and watch the video in order to do that. But beforehand, let's hit those like and subscribe buttons. Go on, we know you want to. But let's get into it. Was Sonic Frontiers actually good? So obviously since it was like a preview play test at PAX, we didn't have our capture card with us and we weren't able to get any footage. Plus we might actually get sued if we showed any of it. So you will be seeing a whole bunch of the trailers more than likely over this footage. But the first area that we did get to explore was the one from all of the trailers so far. So we did only play 20 minutes of it obviously and I guess the first like 10 seconds was story. Yeah, I'm not sure if this was just specifically for the playtesters and they're like trying to get you through it fast or yeah. if there is actually just like 10 seconds of... I felt like it was the first part of the game but I guess we can't say for certain. Yeah, maybe there's an opening cutscene beforehand. Maybe, but this opening cutscene anyway in the preview is Sonic basically like falls out of a wormhole and he's lost Tails and Amy and then a random AI pops up out of nowhere and tells him that he needs to collect all of the Chaos Emeralds and then disappears again. Yep, that's it. It's like you've escaped cyberspace, now go back into cyberspace to collect things to collect the Chaos Emeralds. To and then save your friends. Save your friends. Pretty basic premise, but I mean, Sonic isn't exactly known for its story, is it? So after the five seconds or so of cutscenes that there were, we were free to explore the world. We know that it's gonna be a series of islands or like open zone areas. So since they are open, there wasn't really much direction. It kind of just like sent you on your way. Okay, I kind of disagree with that because we're in like the tutorial stages of the game, I guess you could say. I found that it did push you towards certain things. There was definitely like, it was like corralling you to go a certain way. A little bit how Breath of the Wilds does it with that intro area. That's true. But less open again. Interesting that we have differing opinions on that. Now I did bring up Breath of the Wild. It's been a big conversation. So many games are copying it. I mean, just like, look at this. It had the scene. Did you get Breath of the Wild feels? I definitely got Breath of the Wild feels. It's kind of impossible to not get Breath of the Wild feels, especially after they kind of set it up that way in all of the trailers with that shot that everyone <laughs> seems shot. to do these days, yeah. Yeah, I think it has those elements, but it is definitely its own beast. It is Sonic. It's not as open-y as something like Breath of the Wild. It's not as mm. open-ended. It's open zones. Yeah, so I guess that leads us on to our next point. You escape from cyberspace, you have to go back into cyberspace to collect things to get the emeralds, right? So the open world is basically like a hub area, mm -hmm. I would say. And I guess you could call these cyberspace levels like shrines if we're still doing the Breath of the Wilds comparison, mm -hmm. but they are far more fleshed out, I want to say. They're yeah. actual levels. And yeah. this is where like traditional Sonic fans, they're going to have a good time. Yeah, the cyberspace zones are definitely where you get to go fast. They are most akin to like the old school side scrolling, speedy levels that Sonic does, but they aren't actually side scrolling. They are still over the shoulder, but they definitely have that sort of feel to them. So you don't always get to go fast in the overworld. It's like speckled with little grind rails and speed boosts and puzzles and little clusters of enemies and all of that kind of stuff, which kind of leads us to the issue that a lot of people had with Sonic Frontiers when they'd seen it in the trailers and stuff. And everybody was like, oh, the world's so empty. 
It needs to be empty, man. Yeah, it does have to be empty. If you want to go fast, then you can't have stuff in the way. Random stuff in the way. You're just going to bump into something every five seconds and then you're going to lose all of your momentum. I don't know about you, but I, I hit a tree. If there was more trees, I would have bumped into more trees. Exactly, yeah. You know, there's definitely enough, like more than enough stuff there to is enough flesh stuff. out this open zone and mm -hmm. make it feel alive. More than enough stuff there to have a good time, yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you can't have it so filled with assets in my opinion, because then you're gonna have some horrendous popping and stuff. Like the game was actually really good with that. I didn't have any like super noticeable popping or frame rate issues and things, but I feel like if you're Sonic and you're going yes. super fast throughout the overworld and there's so many things for the game to load in, then it's gonna affect the fidelity of the game. And that is also an important thing we have neglected to mention. We were not, playing this on a Nintendo Switch. We were playing it on a PC. So as far as the game running on a Switch is concerned, I kind of assume it's gonna be a little bit worse. <laughs> Probably. So when we were talking about like pop-ins and you know, lack of frame rate drops and stuff, I mean, who knows actually? We yeah. are playing it on like, let's be honest, a little bit of an outdated piece of hardware. So we pre-ordered the Switch version. I mean, you know, is it obvious that we like the Switch? <laughs> I don't know. Half of that is just because I'm curious to see mm. if it runs really well. Yeah, it probably won't run as well, but hopefully it still doesn't have like hectic popping and stuff. Yeah, with a bit of luck, we should all be fine. That was the main draw card to me. This game just looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And I guess we're a bit far into this video now, but I think it is important for me to mention that I don't actually like Sonic. I'm not a big Sonic fan at all. I love 3D platformers and 2D platformers, but I like to be clear and concise with them. I like to be able to be like, yes, okay, I'm jumping here. And for me, I don't know, maybe my brain doesn't work that fast. So for me to actually be super hyped about this game, somebody who's been turned off by the series just for what it is, not because the games were bad, I think that says a lot about yeah. Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, maybe it'll change Sonic for you. I hope so. And probably lots of other people as well. Because I feel like it's kind of bringing Sonic into like an RPG zone, even though like it's not actually, but instead of just being a series of levels, now it's like connected by this place where you have autonomy over Sonic, yes. you know? Yes. This is going to draw a whole new crowd of Sonic fans in, whether they are like myself, Breath of the Wild fans, or whether there's this whole new generation of kids that love the movies mm -hmm. and love them or hate them, those movies were successful. Oh yeah. And they are drawing in a whole new breed of Sonic fans. And I think this game is gonna capture their hearts. I hope so anyway. I hope so too. Just because I'm not a huge fan doesn't mean I don't hope for Sonic's success. Hmm, that's very nice. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the story a little bit. We've talked about the graphics. We've talked about how beautiful it is, touched on Sonic Speed, but what's most important about a game? Probably how that game plays, you know? Yeah. Gameplay? Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. You want to talk about it too, Miso? Come on, come talk. You want to talk about the gameplay, come Miso? About, come talk about Sonic's gameplay. What do you think? Hey, what do you think about it? What do you think, little buddy? Oh, those are some very good insights. I agree. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> and now he's attacking my foot. Ow. So we go into this open area, we explore around a little bit, solve some puzzles to open gates to get into next areas. And then we're kind of introduced to some enemies and the guardians and stuff. And once we started defeating some of the guardians, sort of Sonic's gameplay loop kind of made itself clear to me. So you defeat guardians, you get these portal gears. You need to collect the portal gears to open up the cyberspace areas. And then when you do the cyberspace areas, you get vault keys and then you collect enough vault keys to open up emerald vaults and then you get the chaos emeralds. I hope you guys followed that because 
I like <laughs> so didn't, man. It's like written here in front of us on notes and I still did not know. I actually follow. only had to look down for the Emerald Vault. So you get the Guardians, <laughs> then get Portal Gears. Portal Gears open up cyberspace. Cyberspace gives you Vault Keys. Vault Keys give you Emeralds. Okay. So there's a lot of collecting. Yes, it, it does seem like a collectathon mm. very early on. 3D platformers, man. That's what they're all about. Apart from the gameplay loop, Sonic has a lot more going on in this game. Move-wise, he actually has a whole skill tree. Mm -hmm. And this comes back to you like bringing him into like an RPG-ish yeah. setting. Uh -huh. There's definitely more links between the RPG and 3D platform here, which I personally love. Yeah, there's definitely some RPG elements. Like, they're like my two favorite game genres of all time. So, I mean, yes, please. <laughs> we only got to unlock one mm -hmm. of his moves, which you would have seen in many trailers. It's the run around people and do damage to them move. It's called Psy Loop. There you go. And it, oh, okay, that's got a pretty cool name. If you guys have ever played Astral Chain before, it's pretty much exactly the same as the Chain Bind. Yes, it actually is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's essentially the same premise. I haven't thought about that before, but yeah, you're so right. It's exactly the same. Yeah, so besides the skill tree, he also has a way more fleshed out combat system. So he can parry, lock on, all of that kind of good stuff as well. So I did think that my preview of Sonic Frontiers was really good, but there was some things that I wasn't a fan of, like the targeting system I felt was quite finicky and kind of slippery. So usually when I lock onto a target in a game, I want the camera to strafe around the enemy, right? So the enemy is like always in my field of vision and I can see what move that gonna hit me with next, all of that kind of stuff. But the one in Sonic Frontiers, I felt like the camera was following Sonic rather than following the enemy. So I had no idea where the enemy was. I kept like targeting on and off, like probably 10 times throughout the battle because I didn't know if I was even targeted or not. It's like, you didn't really know what enemy you were locked onto because like maybe you were locked onto an enemy that's way over there. Yeah, and you're you looking at an see. enemy over here. Yeah, you're so right, exactly. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna hit that enemy. And then all of a sudden, yeah. 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 My major issue I had so when we were play testing, I looked around and I was in front of everybody and I was like, sweet, okay, I've got a little bit of time to explore. So I went back, I jumped on a bunch of these grind rails that are like scattered throughout the world. And I was like, cool, cool, here we go. Got up on this like little cliff thing. And I was like, ooh, I think I'm the only one here. Walk straight through a rock. Like literally, I just walked inside the rock. Like this rock was big enough that Sonic just disappeared. So there is still a couple of little issues that Sega mm -hmm. has to sort out, which is, I mean, it's a little bit scary considering release is less than a month away now. It's like three weeks away now. But who knows, maybe we were playing a build from- A previous Two build. months ago. True. You know? Really, we haven't actually said this. I'm excited. I'm excited. I am hyped, man. It was really, it was. really good. Mm -hmm. I went into it super skeptical, not knowing what to expect. I've read some articles that have been like very harsh mm -hmm. on Sonic Frontiers and things from playtesters earlier. And so I was really like hoping for the best, but I wasn't expecting the best, you know, like expect nothing and don't be disappointed or however that yeah. saying goes. Prepare for everything, expect nothing. But I was very, very impressed. So Sonic does come out on the 8th of November. So make sure that you tune in here again because we'll definitely review it. We haven't talked about it, but we're gonna review it, right? Okay, we're reviewing it, yep. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll do a more deep dive moment then. Oh man, there's so many gamers coming out, it's insane. <laughs> I thought we were gonna do a Harvestella review. Yeah, same, same. We will, oh, yeah, we will. they come out like two days apart from each other. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So many games to play. <laughs> So little time. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what games you're planning on checking out at the end of October, start of November period. Man, Bayonetta, Mario and Rabbids, Sonic, Pokemon, Hub. <sighs> My wallet's already crying. It is very much in tears right now. We're some kind of gaming. I'm Tom. She's, I'm Laura. She is the, the face of us, you know, she's the pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. It, it is true. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for hearing our thoughts about Sonic Frontiers. Let us know in the comments if you're excited about it or if you've been burnt by Sonic one too many times. Again, I do not blame you. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Peace.